First, you have to know that you know that you know that God wants you free and has already granted your freedom. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, it tells us that God has already granted every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Is freedom from demonic influence a spiritual blessing? Yes, then it's already been granted and already been paid for. That's done, amen? Okay, the second verse, John eight thirty six. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Right? Now, free means free. Free does not mean free uh, with problems. When I say problems, I'm talking about devils, and I'm talking about habits, addictions, things like that. If you have those things, see, the worst thing we can do is say, well, Jesus made me free, and I'm free, and I'm not in bondage at all. And yet, you're still in bondage to habits, addictions, compulsive actions, uh, temperaments, all these kind of things that actually portray more the devil than it does God. Why? Because then you become just like the Pharisees who said, we're not in bondage to any man. While there was a Roman guard standing there saying, hey, you Jews, shut up, move on. Right? And they were in bondage right then. Right? Why? Because their eyes are blinded to their bondage. Now, <clears throat> so if the sun makes you free, you shall be free indeed. So, and it, the thing is, it's so easy to know if you're free. However, so many people get used to being in bondage and living that way that they think they are free, and they've never experienced real freedom. Now, first time I ever experienced real freedom was in Pensacola at the Pensacola Revival. I, things broke off of me, things that, I'd been help, that had held me back for years, and it was demonic influence, absolutely. And those things were broken. Why? Because I, I started in the flesh, meaning I did it on purpose. I wasn't necessarily hearing the voice of God to do it, but I wanted free, and I started being free, acting free, and those things were broken, right? Again, we'll talk about those things later on. Now, <clears throat> in the next verse, Romans 8, 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So these three verses prove that it is God's will for you to be free, live free, and stay free. Amen? Now, so you got to settle that. Number two, second step, get clean, stay clean. See, this, I, I, it's funny this is coming out now because I know God had been uh, directing me, and I even mentioned a while back, that I will soon be teaching on a series of the horrors of sin and the beauty of holiness. And we're going to talk about what real Bible holiness is. And if you're holy in your spirit, you will be holy in your, in your body and in your mind. If you're not holy in your mind and your body, you are not holy in your spirit. Well, okay. Now, <clears throat> so that means you have to repent of any known sin, get, get clean of it, get repent of it, which means to turn around and never go back to it. If you repent and repent and repent, you have never actually repented. Right? You've been convicted of sin, but you've never actually repented. True repentance means you turn your back on it and you never go back to it. Right Now, so uh, especially those sins that are attached to your torment. There are certain sins that cause you torment, things that, that there's different ways this can work. And again, I, I don't have time to get into it today. <clears throat> but there are things that you can do that after you've done it, the devil will torment you over the fact that you did it. And so those are definite, I mean, well, all sin you should repent of. But those things are some of the easier things to know about because you know sometimes even before you do it, the torment it's going to cause later, and yet you still do it. That proves it is demonic influence that you have given over to and that he has that much control in your life. Right? Okay. Now, number next, where are we at? Number three, <clears throat> the next step. You have to thank God and begin to praise God for your freedom, which means you're doing what? You are calling those things which be not as though they were. Why? Because as far as God is concerned, they are the truth. And so you start thanking him for the freedom before you ever even experience the freedom, right? Now that gets you used to thanking God and being free. Now, number four, know that Jesus has already defeated the enemy and has authority to cast the devil out of your life. How many of you agree with that? Amen. Right? So you have to know that Jesus has already defeated the enemy, so whatever you're dealing with is already defeated, right? 
and has, and Jesus has the authority to cast the devil out of your life. Now, number five, know that you can speak for Jesus and speak with his authority. This is big. You have to know that you can, that you actually represent Jesus, that he wants you free, even if you're speaking to yourself, to your body, to your flesh. Paul said it. David said it. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. He was telling his soul, soul, bless God. You will bless God. Daily, you will bless God. He was speaking to himself. The Bible tells us to speak to ourselves, psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. So we are to talk to ourselves and if we talk, the Bible says, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God, which means even when you talk to yourself, you ought to only say what God has said about you. Amen? Amen? Most people have an inner, uh, what, are they, what do they call it? Uh, this, this inner voice, okay? This loop, okay? Uh, oh, they call it an inner script. That's what it is. That they have this inner script that they, they, they were usually raised up believing from a child many times, about themselves, and no matter what goes on in their life, that script is still going on. You'll never amount to anything. You'll never measure up to anything. No matter what they've achieved, no matter what they've done, they have that script, and that keeps them in bondage and opens the door for the enemy to try to come in and torment you even more. And so you need to be speaking. If you're going to have an inner script, let it be the script of Scripture. Amen? Speak to yourself what the Scripture says. All right? Now, and, and you have to be able to speak with his authority. So you are going to command this thing or things, as the case may be, to leave you. And now listen, you have more authority over your own body than anybody else. Right? And you have more authority over your own body than you have technically over anybody else's body. So you should first be able to be a first partaker before you start giving it out. Now, that does not mean stop helping people. It's just saying you have a right to be free. You don't have to be bound while you're trying to help other bound people. Does that make sense? <clears throat> Number six. Here's a big one. Get out of pity. <laughs> Do not speak from pity or even hope. Right? Know that what you are about to do will solve your problem. You have to settle that, all right? And you have to know it. Now, most people, <clears throat> pity takes the form of excuse. Right? And you can, so some of they will argue with you, I mean, just back and forth and never bend an inch. And then, because you make sense and you reason to the point where they cannot deny it, they'll say, well, that's because... Well, a minute ago, you wouldn't even admit it. But now you're saying there's a because. So you're, now you're admitting it, but you're giving an excuse or a reason. And once you've hit that point, you have already put a crack in that armor, and now you can set them free. Does that make sense? And, and what that means is now you have gotten to them to a place where they have to admit that they did something that was not right in that sense. Now, so <clears throat> you don't speak... Definitely, this applies to yourself. You don't speak to yourself out of pity or make excuses. You make excuses, everything will become an excuse. That you have to be able to say what the Bible says, know what the Bible says, and own up to it, and then say, this is what it is, and then you deal with it because that thing will keep tormenting you as long as you keep making excuses. Children that misbehave, that are never disciplined in that sense, will continue to misbehave especially as long as the parents simply make excuses for their behavior, right? And then eventually they get to visit their kids in prison or hospital or grave because that's the path the devil takes them on. Now, number seven, number seven, and there's seven steps, so we're, we're, we're just about there. Number seven, now you have to learn and do this, okay? You have to command the devil whatever it is, to leave your mind and body. And you have to command it to do it now. In other words, right then. When you begin to command, it's then. It's not future. It's right then. Now, notice you have to command the devil to leave your mind and body. Why? Your body does not act on its own. Every move your body makes, righteously or unrighteously, comes from a thought of your mind. Memories can trigger you. 
And people can project onto you once they are triggered something you didn't do, but something somebody else did, but they'll project it onto you because they remembered it. And it'll change their attitude, change their, their mood, change their temperament or whatever it is. And you're wondering, what, what did I do to you? And you did nothing. Somebody else did something. And now it's, you've triggered it somehow or it got triggered. Amen? And that is a spirit causing you to do those things. Now, because you, it, memory should never trigger you toward a bad path. If anything, they should trigger you toward God.